Tough weekend for the Atlanta Falcons and a tough weekend for the Atlanta Braves. They did take two out of three, and it's four out of five after losing three straight games. Unfortunately, even over that five-game stretch, they have made up no ground on the New York Mets, who are the hottest team in baseball, and frankly have had the best record in baseball. If you go back to June 1st, they've been playing very good ball. But you get the opportunity, as we've said you know, for the last month now, that it looks like it's going to come down to this. Braves are two games back desperately. It's literally win this series or go home. You know, They are going to be eliminated from playoff contention if they lose this series to the New York Mets. They do get at home at Truist Park. But one intriguing aspect that we found out yesterday is that Chris Sale will not be getting the ball on full rest in game one of this series. Instead, it'll be Schwellenbach. Why that's important? Because if it comes down to a game 162, Chris Sale will either be on short rest, which I don't know if they will start him on short rest, or you know he will not pitch at all um, for game 162. Yeah, it's a uh... This is a the exact same kind of situation, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, if it works out for Brian Snicker, great. If it doesn't, he's going to be ridiculed. But I'm of the opinion, you know, you can't save ammo or plays for the postseason. You know, you you can't, you know, just say, well, you know, we're assuming we're going to get it. I, I think that is probably the wrong decision. But again, you know, if it works out, great, because then you get sale uh, in, in the wild card. And and then again, you know, that whole argument, like if you can't have sale in the, in the wild card, then, you know, your chances of winning the wild card go down dramatically. But again, we're talking about let's get to the postseason first, counting chickens before the egg, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think in baseball, and we see this time and time again, even if the Braves, if you've been a Braves fan long enough, which I'm sure most of you have, if you go back to 2019, when Michael Soroka started game three instead of games one or two, and then he was unavailable for game five, even though he pitched a gym of a game three, you would have loved to have him out there starting game five. Obviously, we know what happened in game five with Fulte on the mound. They give up 10 runs in the first inning, and that series and season is over. So it's kind of like, it feels like that situation, we'll see if it even even matters yeah. at the end of the day because it very well might not matter um but i think another thing that you have to take into consideration aside from just uh the the potential wild card series and game 162 and that whole thing is just chris sale the last time we saw him in cincinnati looked a little bit gassed and it might have been a day game it might have just been the fact that he hasn't thrown this many innings in five years he's an older pitcher he's a veteran pitcher does it make more sense to make sure, hey, he is fully fueled up with an extra day of resting in a must-win game against the Mets yeah. um, than maybe have him not at 100%? Uh, you, you know, there, there's another thing to take into consideration. I also think there's a psychological aspect to that. Listen, Spencer Schwellenbach has been stopping the bleeding all, all season all for season this long. team, right? You go out there and get kind of, I don't want to say steal a win because the Braves are probably favorites or, or even money or something for this game with Schwellenbach at the, on the bump at home. But you go out and steal a victory in game one with Schwellenbach, who's been your stopper along with Chris Sale, and then you got Chris Sale in game two to make it a 2-0 series. You're feeling really good about that stuff. And the psychology on the Mets, listen, a lot of those guys have been there for blowing, blowing seasons to the Braves. Now you got Chris Sale on a bump in a game to tie the division and take the tiebreaker which is huge because there's no game 163 if the records are tied at the end of the season this series will determine who owns the tiebreaker so if the Braves hypothetically were to sweep this series not only would they have a one game one game lead in the wild card race it'd be a de facto two game lead and their magic number would essentially be two they need a Mets loss and a win in the last series and they would win the the final spot in the NL wild card race so there's also a psychological aspect if you believe Schwellenbach can go out there and get you game one and then you got a fueled up on extra rest Chris Sale the best pitcher in baseball this season for game two you gotta feel great if you're a Braves and on the Mets side of things you ain't feeling too damn good no and, and, and I think that does play a factor because these guys are humans you know everybody likes to think these guys are are, are numbers and on an excel spreadsheet uh and they're robots out there no 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 Emotions play a factor in sports. You, obviously, like this isn't groundbreaking analysis. And, and that and pretty much the entire Mets team, at least the core of it, was all there for two years ago when they come into Atlanta and get swept in a must-win series where they really only needed to take one game. Like the only thing they couldn't do was get swept, and then they got swept. And, and they had their best horses on the mound. I mean, Scherzer was there. DeGrom was there. The healthy DeGrom, healthy Scherzer. So, you know, that certainly 
in the back of their mind. And I think you'd be a fool to say anything otherwise. Yeah. With all that being said, I would have probably thrown Chris Sale game one. Just I simply, agree. <laughs> just simply I because agree. he has been the best pitcher in baseball. I, I think getting this game one, like if you lose this game, now you're behind the yes. eight ball, right? So you win this game with Chris Sale on the bump and you got Schwellenbach. Who's, who's well, in that same sensitive. breath, talking about, you know, uh, motion factor it, it, for the same, for the Braves as well. We've been beat down this year. How huge would it be, like you said, to jump out to that 1-0 lead in the series? It would be massive. Yeah. For no. your own, and, and if you go down like... Like you said, it's going to be massive in the opposite direction yeah. where you're like, damn, yeah, so this with, really is over, you know? With all that being said, like I said, I'd still have started Chris we're Sale. Say, this um, is a huge week. Yeah, I mean, it, Tuesday night, I mean, we're going to know. We're, I mean, Schwellenbach, I mean, what a huge moment for a rookie for a kid, pitcher, yeah. for a guy who uh, everything he's done, every time we've needed him, he's come up big. But this is asking a lot yes, for, for a guy who has not pitched this many innings, who has not been in a moment like this, and he's going to get this opportunity. But we talked about it earlier in the year. We'd love to have I him and feel kid. good about this opportunity. Now he gets the opportunity, and we need a win um, come Tuesday night from Big Spencer Schwellenbach.